Hello and welcome back to Organic Cardboard over here at Sean's house. And today we are playing, uh, well, we played Distilled from Paverson Games. Uh, so Distilled is uh, a game about distilling spirits. And uh, this is a game that uh, Dave Beck uh, created. There are ghosts? Well, <laughs> I mean, you might see some ghosts <laughs> if you if you if you stay up as late as we are playing this game, uh, getting cross-eyed uh, towards the end uh, as we're <laughs> not able to count up our points. We had a spirited bout. Yeah, yeah, very. Uh, yeah, my puns are going to be terrible if I try to think of any right now. <laughs> That's all but I got. if you're not familiar with the still, this is a game that uh, came out on Kickstarter uh, like the summer of uh, 2021. That's when it finished. And uh, this is uh, Dave Beck's first game that he's created with uh, his, his uh, game company, Paverson Games. He's kind of going on to his next one, which is like Luth Luthier. Luthier, I think, is the next one. It's like uh, you're, the people that make uh, whatever, like wooden instruments, I think. Oh, <laughs> so it's another vocation. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, one that, because uh, for me, uh, with Distilled, you know, this theme of distilled is that you're, you're making spirits. You've got uh, somebody that is a, uh, uh, has inherited a distillery. You're playing a certain uh, distiller that is based off of, uh, I guess, an actual real person. They all have kind of a little biography around them. And uh, they come from different parts of the world. They've got different types of, of booze that they make. Um, but otherwise, they are trying to just like, it, you're trying to make your distillery as successful as possible and kind of uh, win the day over the, the next other distiller next to you or distillers next to you. This goes up to five games. I mean, five games goes up to five people. Uh, this is 1230 in the, at night, so <laughs> <laughs> bear with me. Uh, but yeah, it's one to, one to five people. And um, I don't know what, the, what they put the age. They put it at 14 and up, uh, 30 minutes per, per player <laughs> you think they think we beat this in an hour i it yeah. says 14 and up but this would be totally boring for anybody under 21 yeah <laughs> probably so yeah and uh, a lot of people don't like this uh, uh theme as much as i do i found which i mean i don't drink a lot of alcohol but i, I usually have a beer with me when i'm over here at sean's and uh I really like the, the the concept of creating alcohol. I think the whole process is really neat. And one thing that Distilled does is uh, they really uh, get the theme down in the game. I think I think the theme really shines through. Uh, and and it's it's one of the most thematic games I think I've I've played um, as far as just how everything plays out in a way that feels. Uh, uh, Feels like you're doing what you know the game is is, is trying to, to propose that you're doing. It's always interesting when they break down these the the components of a particular activity like creating mm -hmm. whiskey and and all these alcohols. Uh, yeah. They take that and then they 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 piece it out and then make it game components mm -hmm. and, they, and they put put a rule set on top yeah. of it and stuff. It's a, it, I, thought, I think they did that well. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me a little, not in me uh, game uh, uh, mechanisms, but in theme, like how uh, Viticulture did, where I feel like they did a pretty good job too, of like creating this idea. I mean, there's, there's still some weird like things that go on that it's like, ah, don't think about it too hard. It's just get a game mechanism. <laughs> um, so with, but with the still though, you, you go you go through a few different phases. You go through a market phase is like the, the longest part of the game uh, in general is the market phase where people are kind of stressing over what they're gonna purchase uh, for that round. And then uh, you have to set yourself up in a way for the next phase, which is gonna be the distilled phase uh, where you're, you're, you're putting your ingredients together in order to make whatever type of uh, booze you're trying to make that's gonna be based off of like a little recipe card uh, that you have this is variable for each game but everybody has the same one so we're all kind of uh, fighting over the same spirits in a sense um, and you, you always have to have like a yeast card you always have to have a water card and you have to have some type of sugar and every one of your sugars is going to bring extra alcohol card into your hand uh, and then you're going to shuffle all that stuff up so at the bare minimum you'll be shuffling four, four cards out 
and then you'll draw a card off the top of that shuffle and one off the bottom and that represents these two parts of the distillation process where uh, I guess they get to like save parts I don't know I've, I've made beer at home uh, quite a bit but I've never uh, <laughs> tried to make any hard booze uh, so uh, I don't uh, I, there's nothing that I uh, the only thing that I would save potentially from making a batch of beer is the yeast at the bottom people do that sometimes and they'll reuse it in another batch so this is doing something similar where they're taking a, a little bit from the top and a little bit from the bottom they're able to reuse that in that's additional some, batches another yeah. great example though of mm. a game mechanism that's basically mirroring something in real life that, yeah. that, that's part of that activity I, lo yeah. I love it when they mix those those together that's great yeah and what other game does that and that is probably like the most uh from what i've uh, learned and uh, in my own enthusiasm for this game and my awareness now of the lack of enthusiasm that some people have for this game is that that's probably the most controversial uh, element to this game is that draw that that random draw off the top and draw off the bottom uh, thing yeah. uh, because people hate it when they they end up uh, maybe they set themselves up in a really good way like where they've got a pretty good percentage chance that they're not going to take off the ingredient that they need uh to to make the the alcohol because what's left is what you can make you you you, you put that against this this recipe card list and uh from there you'll you'll end up being able to to see these uh what it is that you potentially made off of here so and if, if you don't have that yeah, yeah. If your ingredients uh, your pool of ingredients is too low you might pull out the critical ingredient mm -hmm. you needed to make a particular type of alcohol. Exactly, yeah, and that keeps, uh, uh, you know, somebody from being able to get the points that they want to get that round, getting the money that they want to get, doing this, this big move. And so if you don't set yourself up well, or if you set yourself up kind of shy, or if you're just super unlucky and you didn't set yourself up in a way where it was guaranteed, because there, there's certainly ways mm -hmm. to make sure that you're going to be able to make the, the thing that you want to do. Uh, then you might end up getting screwed <laughs> and people like that I've seen like it can I, I've, I've, I've seen it where it just really um, causes people not have a good time uh, playing the game uh, when that goes on I personally uh, love that mechanism I think it's 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 really fun because it, 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 put, it creates a really exciting push your luck mechanism in the game that's also completely uh, mitigatable and <laughs> like you can just get past it if you want to you don't have you don't you don't have to take any chances with that that um, forces you to put a lot of ingredients in yeah where we it would be nice to kind of save some away for for another mm -hmm. round so you don't have to go buying so much because it's expensive yeah to buy you can only get so many basic things and if you don't have the yeast and water mm -hmm. then you're um uh, then you gotta pay a lot of money for the other ingredients, right? Yeah, it, it can you can get uh, very limited very quick. Uh, so you have like this this premium market that you can purchase from on the game, um, and you can do that as much as you you want to. But you you're obviously limited on the amount of funds that you have. But this, these really cheap items that come from this basic market, you can you can get those, uh, but only up to two times during one round. So like to, like you said, if you don't have water or yeast. Two of the basic market ingredients are water and yeast. That would be the only two cheap ingredients you could get. And you have to have, have these to do anything. To do anything, yeah. And you have to have one sugar, too. So there's certainly a lot of planning that goes involved with this. You know, you can't just willy-nilly throw stuff together and expect to make some high-end, like, you know, pricey uh, alcohol that everybody's going to want. Uh, and, and so if you're going to be pushing the limits on, like, I'm going to have just barely enough to maybe this will come out right. We'll see what happens because it's a biological process when you're making alcohol. And uh, if you don't secure your ingredients properly and make sure you're doing it the right way, then you might come out with something that, that tastes like crap. Uh, and speaking of taste, uh, that's one of the things that's fun with the theme of the game too. Is you, so you can either make spirits that are going to be aged or ones that aren't going to be aged, but the ones that are aged... Uh, every round they'll get these flavor cards and they'll give you like a big uh, uh, bonus if you save at least five of those and there's only uh, seven rounds and you only get one per round normally there might be other special ways that you get those uh, throughout the game through some of these these upgrades that you can get you can kind of upgrade your distillery as you go 
um, but there's some some really fun uh, flavors like Sean's pulling out here. There's uh, there's horse blanket, skunky. You got one that's cardboard. There, there's leather. There's there's <laughs> nail polish. These are all terrible except for cinnamon at the end. Uh, there's there's plenty of good uh, sounding ones. Like I got one that was like toasted marshmallows. Another one. Boy. Um, <laughs> Of all the flavors citrus. we pulled out, we got some real winners here. Yeah. <laughs> Skunk and horse blanket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they'll at least, they usually will tend to give you a little extra money with them, but it doesn't matter how weird and funky your, your brew is, uh, as long as you have uh, a lot of distinct flavors, then it will get, like one of them's manure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shoot. Yeah, but then there's nice ones like ginger and, and orange peels and caramel. Um, so that that's all uh, uh, that's all fun, uh, and 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 it's fun because you don't get to like see it until you crack open your your uh, batch in order to sell it. So when you go to sell it, make your points off of it, make your money off of it. At that point, you get to flip over all of your your flavor cards and see what it was that you made. So very thematic in that sense. There's like a big variety of them too. There's, yeah, there's a lot of. So you're probably not going to run into the same ones every time. Yeah, I, mean, I remember when. So I I, uh, I didn't get this on Kickstarter. I kind of I kind of passed it. I think I left it at a one dollar back. Um, I just wasn't sure about it, uh, and and it was expensive uh, to get. It's, it's still fairly uh, an expensive game for for what it is. Just a big card game. Uh, but uh, I think after playing it, you know, there's a lot of thought that that went uh, into it and everything. And one of the things I remember during that Kickstarter because I was following like the uh, the updates and things afterwards and he was uh, having I, if I remember correctly he was having like people help with like figure out like like ideas for flavors fun silly things and it was kind of like a fun thing to just see what other funky flavors they could put into there like ones like fishy this is one of them it's like, Ooh, like you just kind of get this <laughs> imagine you're imagining this is super gross uh, batches of liquor that you're making, but um, but that's that that that's really neat, you know, and and um, the uh, the the distillery upgrades themselves are are certainly one of the things that I find uh, one of the, the most appealing things beyond just that basic mechanism that it's playing off of during the distill phase with the shuffling and the grabbing of those two cards out. Um, the upgrades uh, can really give you some asymmetrical, like strong powers. And if you can work those upgrades to your benefit, you can do things that like uh, totally break the game in certain ways. And some of them are like a little more subtle. They'll just give you consistent points if you keep working the angle of them, which may uh, help you win the day even better than some of the other more you know flashy ones that, that show up. Um, but I tend to go for the flashy ones that are fun and make you feel like you're doing something really, really <laughs> special. Because, like, for instance, one of them uh, will let you, like Sean had it in this game, is the column still, and it'll allow you to just take the top card off, so you shuffle all those cards off, and you're only having to remove one. So you know if you have the opportunity where you have at least two of the cards that you really need, you'll know that you're going to be able to make the, the batch that you can make. There's another card that's called the Spirit Safe, and if you have that as one of your three upgrades that you can do in your distillery, then you can uh, not only if you combine that with the column still, which I've done in like two of the games that I've played, every time you pull that one off, you can put it back. So you just know that you only need the bare minimum of ingredients to make anything that you want to. Oh, wow. Um, so that's fun. It doesn't break the game as much as you'd think, but it's, it feels really cool to be able to do that. And you, it does feel fairly powerful but there's also benefits of just adding a bunch of ingredients into your batch too and and uh and and not pushing you know just like trying to get past the luck factor of what you're going to be pulling out and not and have those special upgrades it means you're also going to get extra alcohol cards in your your batch you're going to make more money when you sell it um yeah, you're still going to so get the push, points for those pushable. extra ingredients you just mm -hmm. might not have much left over for the next round yeah yeah, that's that's true. So yeah, because you'll kind of like blow blow everything, <laughs> blow your load, so to speak, <laughs> and uh, you won't you, you just be uh, uh, hopeful that the couple cards that you pull off of that are going to be helpful for you. They kind of mitigate that a little bit. They do another one of their little tricky mechanisms is they allow uh, the alcohol cards to come off with that pull, up, and so uh, they can count as either water or yeast. So they'll get you past a little bit of those requirements that you'll need for the mm -hmm. next. Uh, batch so kind of key I think that probably that that was probably added in to keep the game you know flowing in a way where it didn't feel like you were overly restricted you're always able to make something you know as long as you got those three basic ingredients you can either make moonshine or vodka um, and that 
also uh, one of the other big mechanisms I think that that is, is really exciting as you're playing the game too is manipulating these these like uh, you have these label bonus spots. So every time you sell an alcohol, you can put one of these label uh, labels down. So you gain a label for whatever it is. If you make moonshine, you get a moonshine label to signify like you know this is the batch that you sold. And at the top of your your player mat, you got all these areas where you can get like either like a free ingredient or a free uh, distillery upgrade um, or, or a premium item. You got a way to like kind of go through the discard piles once, and you only get to do these things once throughout the game. But they can uh, they're really vital to get yourself set up early on. Uh, I really enjoy the way that, that all flows together between being able to do those 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 bonus upgrades there the um the distillery upgrades themselves and the and just and just the excitement i think of of doing that that shuffling uh and and the pull off the top and bottom and and uh and pressing your luck you know it's like ah, i don't know if this is going to work i'm going to try it anyways and then when it does work it's awesome when it doesn't work it's like ah the, made vodka yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that happened to Mazel me to it happened to be a couple of times where i i i pulled off the i my ingredients list was too thin no, i just ended up you end up making vodka so it's, it's like mm -hmm. the most basic uh, thing yeah. that you it, and they sort of make it so you can always sell something mm -hmm. you know uh, I, I think for the most part I'm not sure how I'm not sure how you could mess it up like it, and not be able to at least make yeah. either vodka or the moonshine mm -hmm. yeah they they do some uh, fun things about like limiting the number of labels uh, that are available depending on player count so like in a two player player count you you know once people have made four moonshines or four vodka you know if you've made four vodkas which is again the easiest one i think to make uh then nobody gets a, a spirit label bonus if they keep making that. So they, they really try to push you to try to you know do, just keep doing the simple strategy and, and try to do do something a little a little more varied. Um, I like I like uh, like you're talking about the distillery upgrades, uh, the equipment and the specialists and stuff that you mm -hmm. can get. It's funny because it starts off sort of it, uh, well asymmetrical because every every uh, distiller has what are these people called distillers yeah i guess yeah distillery owners or whatever distillers yeah yeah so mm -hmm. every distiller has their own unique uh special power mm -hmm. like mine is uh oh, yeah, gives me, true. yeah gives me two less uh for an ingredient and then as you add more of these things become more of the separation between what what you and i can do gets wider and wider and more specific based on what we the way we want to approach the game you know i was when i found these i was looking for something that was really simple easy to remember because mm -hmm. <laughs> my big thing is i'll buy a bonus card or get in on a bonus and but because i'm, forget to I'm not it. living and breathing this game is any game where i haven't had to read the rule book and learn for myself i'm just kind of winging it usually mm -hmm. through most of the first time i play it so i picked stuff that was really easy to remember but added added a uh, good effects like having uh, extra alcohol when i when i uh sort out the alcohol and then the column still so i could have more accurately guess mm -hmm. what i needed to to get my ingredients yeah still wasn't enough to get me by uh, at least still, one round. Still, still wasn't enough the still column, wasn't enough. the column still still wasn't enough uh, yeah. so yeah, yeah i i love i love the 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 diverging asymmetric mm. uh, abilities of it and how uh, yeah and how specific you can make it to your goals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and and you, you know, like I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, each one of these guys has their own special power. Um, some of them aren't very like I don't know. Like I feel like there's some that aren't as powerful as others, but they tend to like come with more starting resources. Uh, so I think it offsets it. Or um, maybe they're not as powerful, but they have like a really uh, high point value. Um, uh, a sign like signature recipe that they do so like right. you might have one that's got a more powerful constant ability but like their signature recipe isn't even as valuable as some of the other ones that you can make so you might not even end up going for it uh, just depending so there's a lot of variability in your strategy um, like you said that that kind of divergence that you that you get going on with with the uh, you know the, the upgrades in general so um, and and you you also have uh, these hidden goals so Sean, like, I don't want to speak too much for you, but you, he was kind of thinking of this is similar to Wingspan a little bit. Um, and 
uh, Wingspan has these, you, so you have like hidden goals, you got those ones in your hand, you've got goals that you're going for during the game as well. Uh, so this kind of does a similar thing with that, and um, I, I like that. I, I like to have some direction in a game that has like several, you know, directions you could go in and you don't know where to start. Uh, these distillery goals uh, give you a, a pretty... I mean, they're not like a game-breaking uh, chunk of points, but a lot of the games will like I don't know what we what are we in with like a uh, one like a it wasn't even twenty point difference was it? So you ended at eighty eight, I ended at one oh three. So these, I mean, getting making sure that you're able to get these extra points. I got an extra eleven points from mine. Sean got an extra twelve points from finishing his goals, his hidden goals. Um, if you don't go for these. You know, then that that can like if I didn't get these, uh, Sean would have been super close to me, and very well like would have just been one small decision from, uh, uh, you know, from having won that. So I don't think there is funny because there's <laughs> like no particular aspect of this that you can ignore. Yeah. you got to get your points everywhere that you can get your points. Yeah, or you know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I've uh, the last game I played, I feel like that my distillery goals were like I'm not going to hit any of these. I think I, I think I didn't hit any of them. Also, also <laughs> I guess I'm not really uh, speaking much for my argument here because I, I did come in dead last in that game. But I don't, I don't think that was the whole reason. I had some other issues uh, with my set, the way that I, I'd set it up. Well, sometimes um, it's weird, like so. Uh, the my particular person, the way I was set up, I was I was getting stuff from a different region, but I had a goal to use bottles from a from a that give you more points if you if I'd pick different oh, alcohols yeah. from a different region. Yeah. And I was sitting here looking at the difference in points, and I would have done a lot better if I just made these alcohols versus trying to get this five points. Yeah. <laughs> like, like this or is going to give me if you, uh, if four points. If you made the African, is, yeah, yeah if I, alcohols. So if I made an African uh, alcohol, then I probably would have gotten more points overall than just getting, using the models just to get mm -hmm. to the, this thing, so. Yeah, that, that kind of uh, brings me to the point too that like we are uh, playing with the expansion. This, this is the first time I've used the expansion of the game. And uh, there's not that big of a difference. It adds a little more variety, a little more change in the way that, that things happen. But for the most part, it's kind of just doing a similar thing. It adds an extra region. You've got, like Sean was starting to mention the bottles. You've got the, the main game has got three different regions. Yeah, I can't remember what, what one of them is like Europe and and the other one's like Asia. And, and uh, there's Asia and Oceania. Do you have them? Those are the list. Yeah, Asia and Oceania, Europe, the Americas. The distillers have their own region that refers back, but it's one of those three. And then the um, African expansion, it's the Africa and uh, Middle East expansion. And it's, so that's just one extra type that can show up. Uh, you get bonuses, like if you have bottles from either a bunch of bottles from the same exact region, or if you have like a mix of all the bottles, you get a little extra bonus at the end. Um, so yeah, like Sean was saying, he's, 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 he's going for recipes that re give him, uh, that, that are, have labels from specific, like his is coming from an Asia region, but his uh, bonuses are coming from African regions, so he's mismatching the, the type of liquor to the bottle, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's funny, because sometimes that's what happens with these little goals, is you'll end up going for suboptimal so a couple of suboptimal decisions I'm just bad to kind of get it yeah. done too. Mm -hmm. I'm bad for that uh, playing uh, actual like wingspan or wormspan. Uh, I find that I'll, I'll focus on those to my own detriment. It's probably worse in wingspan and wormspan. I feel like, um, but this is a, a I don't know. Like how how do you how do you feel about those? about this in comparison to that to wingspan to, to wingspan yeah so this this has a real wingspan vibe to it like it, and it's it, it's like the whole thing not just the points here but the collecting of cards and then mm -hmm. placing them in certain places to to do what you want to do mm -hmm. so but but there's not it's not really an engine builder I mean, you, maybe a little bit with the with the production. A bit, yeah. With the three, you got just three in this cars one area. that you can use for engine building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, but uh, yeah, 
I, I feel like if you really liked Wingspan, this would be just kind of a short jump over mm -hmm. to the left or the right. It's not the same game. Mm -hmm. It's not the same theme. Uh, it's They both have cards. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of games have that, you know, but, but it is sort of... It, oh, it's almost like a temporary deck builder. Like you're building mm. a little temporary deck and then you cash it in. And then you cash it out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in a sense. Yeah, you, I mean, that's basically what you're doing because you are shuffling. You're, you're, you know, you're ha having to uh, work off the luck of your pulls and stuff like that. I, I think what it's... What does that make it a set collection kind of game? Uh, you know, no, I mean, uh, I mean, there's you, sort of a set collection element in order to be able to make a recipe um you know luck mitigation and all of that uh, i think this is definitely a a more comp it's this is a deceptively more complicated game than um than wingspan is uh, i think the basic idea of this game is very uh i think it's pretty easy to grasp it's it's awkward the first times that you're playing it to like you, you just need to see it happen a few times um but i don't think there's anything that's like you know, like the rules aren't overly complicated. The idea of what you're doing is not overly complicated, except it's just like how that's going to um, work to your benefit. How you're going to be able to manipulate things in order, like why are you doing something? What, what, you know, when you're trying to figure that out. I feel like it's a little more obvious in something like Wingspan, um, but it's a it's a very different game at that at that point. I would, I yeah. would say. But I can definitely see like the, the goals, you know, having having somewhat of you have somewhat of an engine that you're building uh, with the, your distillery and their upgrades. You can change your upgrades out as you go. Um, but it's kind of like money's so tight in this game that you're, you tend to just go for the, the thing that you can, um, you know, like you don't want to have to keep buying distillery upgrades and knocking out your other ones. Um, unless you just happen to somehow be able to just make a, a buttload of money early on in the game. Uh, you might you might find some kind of a way. You might have some special power that lets you, you know, switch things out a little easier. There's a lot of those little hidden th uh, elements in this game, um, but uh, there's a lot of layered decisions. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, am I going to go for that? Well, if I do that, I'm going I might need this barrel to age mm -hmm. it in or this bottle to put it in. Oh, well, that's optimized because it's you know. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a lot of uh, it's a real thinky puzzle, mm -hmm. and so that first I think, but it's easy to learn. Like the yeah. concepts are are dead simple. Uh, it's a really easy thing to teach. I think uh, mm -hmm. that's a big bonus for that. Uh, and you yeah, know, we played this we played this a couple of weeks ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, it's I'm been a few track. now. Yeah, it's probably been four weeks ago by now. And then within like you know. Five minutes or so after the setup, I was I was right back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sean's just like, because uh, at first I was like, I was like, oh my god, like, you're I don't just gonna have to do this, this once. Yeah, you're just gonna have to do this once for me to see it. Yeah, but yeah, but I, once you get through that first round, and if you're playing with more than two people, mm -hmm. this is thinky enough to where you got plenty of time to figure out what you mm -hmm. want to do. <laughs> I, I played it with four the last time I played it, and and I came in, uh, uh, you know, like dead last in it, and uh, still really enjoyed it. Um, That's so good. I think that that all like speaks a lot to, to what this game's doing. I think you have a lot of agency in this game uh, more so than you do. And, and w I feel like I, I really I, I do really like Wingspan and Wormspan. Uh, and I, I think they're, um, they're 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 fun for what they are. But I don't feel like you have I feel like you're a little more reliant on the luck of what shows up in that game. There's certainly things that that come to align just the right way with you in this game too, um, but I feel like you have a little more. It's a little more on you to get yourself set up in a way that's going to benefit you because, and then sometimes it's just like having played a, you know a few games of it to to realize where you can get uh, really you can get really off track quick in this game if you don't stay focused on certain pathways. Um, like if you try to make all the different liquor, you, did, you, you we ended up like I, I unlocked four extra recipes on mine. You do that as you play the game. You can unlock recipes so that you can make more varied products. Um, this is the most I've ever done. I think most of the time, like a, this is I think the fourth time I've played this game, and I uh, most, a lot of the times I'm only unlocking like one or two other recipes. Yeah. I'm just just figuring out how to make that work for me, and get my signature recipe in there and and, and work that in. Um, yeah, my my unlock was mainly to to get one of these other cards. Yeah, 
and uh, and so that so and you can pick you can pick types of alcohols that are kind of in line with the sugars that you're buying already. Mm -hmm. So I just went all with the grains, all the wheat sugars or whatever these are. Yeah, the grains are fun because they're super easy to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I took advantage of uh, fruit sugars more this game because I got a, a distillery upgrade that allowed me to get a free sugar every round. So. Uh, there's a lot of fun little things like that, but uh, but man, like this this game, I think is um, is so much uh, better than than people maybe realize to start off with. I think it's it's one that kind of uh, somewhat flew under the radar or flew under my radar a bit, even though I was aware of the Kickstarter. I just I didn't I didn't think it was going to be as good of a game as it was, and I, I, I think it's really surprised me in how it's done. It's fine. You just let that go. But I think it's really surprised me in the way that it's. Um, you know plays itself out i've en uh, enjoyed it a whole lot myself my fiance enjoys it a lot um and she's really picky about like games that they have to be fun games for her to enjoy it like mm -hmm. and i say that in the sense of like you know my idea of fun is a lot of times way more convoluted than hers so <laughs> she doesn't like game like like i we both really like the white castle is a good good example she hates the white castle because really it's just it's way too convoluted in the way that you have to manipulate all these little i gotta do this to do that to do this mm -hmm. this all makes sense and is enjoyable and and even uh i think i think i played it twice with her so far and she lost i think both times and still really liked it so that's that's a big plus that's cool i think anytime that that's that, that's one of the the best litmus tests for a great game as losing a game and really enjoying it and wanting to play it again and 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 feeling like that you had a great time even when you lost it's, it's kind of rare to really think that you've enjoyed your time uh while losing <laughs> i don't know i guess that depends on like how how caught up on yeah. the competitive part of it you are too but because you're but, getting to do your own thing at the same time so yeah. i guess that's part i guess that's probably a big part of where it's still fun this is a game where it feels like you're playing yourself a little bit mm -hmm. like you're you know you've um you're not not that it's like a a uh, team solo game or something like yeah, some games yeah, are, the, yeah. but but you are you are uh, working within your the things you have available to try and create stuff and it's try to it, it's an interesting it's interesting to see what kind of goals uh, you can achieve just based off uh, a, a couple of mitigating steps like adding extra weed or adding extra extra sugars that you might need mm -hmm. to avoid the pull off and stuff like that. I I think. This is more fun than Wingspan, mm -hmm. but what okay. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sean's not the biggest fan of Wingspan. You <laughs> sold your Wingspan, didn't you? I did. Well, 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 one of them. Well, you no. kept he kept the I kept the, 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 I don't, the dual one. I don't hate Wingspan. Yeah. I, I just I just don't There's play other, as much as other stuff. And There's this is a typically the genre like this card these card mm -hmm. uh, games and stuff. Mm -hmm. They they aren't really my favorite type of game, but. Uh, I like this one a lot better than most of the ones that, that I've seen like mm -hmm. this. And uh, uh, it seems like it was really well thought out. I love how, how the theme is incorporated into it at, at, at every level. I, love, I think that that's really neat. Mm -hmm. It's not a theme I ever really cared about. I don't really drink. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, you know, but... Not enough to no. really be. He's not. He doesn't like to sip whiskey or anything. I'm like never that, gonna yeah. buy an expensive bottle of whiskey yeah. or anything like that and be like, "Oh yeah, it's great." You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. I'm not gonna mm, nail polish. You know? Oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm never that. gonna be able to identify these flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the skunk. The skunky taste. Maybe the skunky one. Uh, but I don't, I don't want any skunky whiskey. And yet. I thought it was I thought it was a lot of fun, um, especially if you're playing with it, maybe drinking. I, I think if a young person probably wouldn't care so much. These are these are no. these aren't things that they will have encountered necessarily a lot. Um, no, I think Dave Beck kind of comes off as kind of a, a uh, you know just one of those slightly mature, mature sophisticated fellow, and uh, <laughs> that's why his next game is Luthier, and he's uh, you know he's, he's making violins and uh, pianos and stuff. I don't know, <laughs> but he, yeah, he seems like the kind of guy that probably likes to to have a uh, you know. A, in fact, I think they even say it somewhere in their rule book that they like to play the game with a whiskey uh, or something you know a little spirit next to him but uh it's definitely not required 
um, and it hasn't been required for me, but I, I enjoy that as well. But boy, if you're a whiskey snob, this uh, and you like mm. board games, oh, boy, this oh, is yeah. your stuff. Well, it's like people playing viticulture, drinking wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good, good game to have a have have a, a whiskey or two with, but uh, definitely not required to have a good time. Just like drinking wine, the art works nice. To enjoy viticulture. It's not. It's not blowing me out of the water, but it's it's, it's really nice. No, it's it's Eric, really well done. Eric Evanson is the name of the artist. Um, I think it feels uh, very um, inviting. Uh, the, the artwork is, uh, uh, um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. There, there's no, uh, if it, it has like kind of like a uh, iconic's not the right word. I'm trying to say like it's almost like an iconographic kind of like not iconic but iconographic like you've got here's a here's here's a an ingredient and it's just like it's it's the picture of the ingredient but it's very like it's not it doesn't come off as like um how what's the what am i trying it, to say it, exactly? it reads very clean yeah it re yeah. mm -hmm. the, the iconography is very easy it's like to, sharp images of yeah. like you know this is the thing but still the way the cards are laid out on. it's very clear uh mm. all the elements of it are, are real clear mm -hmm. it's not something that uh is super hard to read it's got some small type in it but there's not yeah. so much of it to read that that it's a pain yeah it's not overly terrible you know the worst part is usually bringing out like new dis new upgrade cards and i usually just read those immediately every time we pull them out um just so everybody's you know halfway aware of, of what's coming out uh, there's extra flavor text and things like that too on some of this stuff um, but uh, but overall just a really really well designed game really enjoy it um, you know I like to rate my games uh, I, I give this game a, a good eight and a half out of, out of ten uh, just right up there with any of the other uh, you know really high-end games that, that I enjoy a lot um, I don't know if it would go higher than that just because there is uh, always going to be this feeling that um, you know there there is a there is still a fair amount of like you 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 you're it's not it's it's not going to ever feel like a euro in the sense that you have full agency over everything that you're doing. Uh, there there is certainly a, a luck of the draw. You're you're dealing with decks of cards and and the way things come out. So I don't know if it'll ever quite go above that eight and a half for me. But I think I think it's still. A, very solid it's with with some of my top favorite games uh, that, I, that I kind of put in that category. So um, really, really good job. I think they, they really knocked it out of the park with this. And I'm actually, after having played this uh, a bit, I, I am, uh, even though I'm not immediately attracted to the theme of uh, Luthier, I, uh, I, I'm actually more interested in, in wanting to look at it. And I may end up backing it just purely based off of how well he did this. We'll see. We'll see what. Yeah, to see more more what we'll this particular what fellow's got to offer. I'm not so stuck on on a theme that it has to be something that I'm um, into to. Well, you know, hey, making, we, making we, loots. We always <laughs> always mention we you know we've we've and and I, and I hate to compare this. I'm not I'm not trying to overly compare this to Wingspan, but I will say like Wingspan was a theme that um, that was the first one that I really didn't. Uh, care too much for the theme. I'm not against birds, but I just was like bird game, birds. I don't know, whatever. Birds aren't real, I heard. And I really enjoyed it. And that was the first one that started to show me that I don't have to be super into the theme to really like a game. And uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye out for for Luth here as well. But I think that's about all we got to say. We've been really uh, babbling a lot about this game, but it's it's a good one. So do you it is a good yeah. game. I, I'm curious what it costs. Uh, so this, so I got it used, and this was about. Uh, I, I think I gave the guy fifty bucks for it. Um, oh wow! And and it was like barely used. It had like a little bit of box damage, but like uh, very very minimal. Probably just something that came from him getting it shipped to him. Um, he said he pulled it out in front of his wife, and his wife was like, "That's too complicated." And then he like never got to play it with her, and so oh. he just immediately got rid of it because he knew I've it wasn't there. with his wife. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think it I think it retails for eighty. Uh, dollars and um, oh, that was a good bargain then. Yeah, you know, uh, I think it's got a little. It's got a little trays to. Uh, it's it's hard for me to. Yeah, those are nice little. little it's got trays. some nice. Uh, I think these may actually be game trays. Trays. I'm not a hundred percent on that. I think they may be though. Uh, game trays, brand trays. 
um, yeah, really nice production. Uh, they've, they've uh, you know, I didn't get, of course, the Kickstarter's got like metal coins and you can get metal cubes. I don't know why you need metal cubes, but you can get oh, metal wow. cubes. You can get little metal cubes for your recipe markers. Literally, no, I, I would maybe get the metal coins, but like, no, there's no re reason to get metal cubes. But either way, the, the insert's uh, super nice, uh, holds everything really well. You've got like, you know, really... Uh, Hold your sleeved cards. Yeah, like here, here's oh, just not? an example. Like this, this thing holds all of the recipes uh, for you, and like your the player little uh, point markers and and things like that. Um, and the rest of the inserts kind of like this, where you just have nice uh, tight uh, holders for everything. That it's looks got, like Wasteland Express. Yeah, it's got enough. It's got enough room for all the cards, uh, sleeved, and uh, with the expansion. Uh, so they took into account all of that stuff. Um, great production. Um, I feel like, I mean, the guy, I, I don't, I, it's not that he doesn't deserve $80 for his game. It does feel like it's a little on the expensive side for it being a bunch of cards and, and a card game, but um, a lot of thought went into it too. And, and it is a really, um, you know, overall a really, really nice production. So I don't think it's necessarily like a, a bad price at 80. Uh, I'd have a hard time maybe getting, at least jumping into it. Well, but if you really like the theme you, though. Yeah. If, right, that 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 would be the big push, or this type of game. Mm -hmm. uh, if that was something that really appeals to you, if you like these uh, card um, card drafting, yeah, kind of games and stuff. Um, if you got to play the game, I think with somebody too. Like if I didn't have this game and I got to play it for a bit, I'd probably be like. I'm gonna spend eighty bucks on this game. I'd still be looking for a deal. Where's where's I'm gonna find it for for seventy two somewhere or something. He's always yeah. looking for a deal. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wheeling and dealing. I tell uh, you, I, I I've I've gone from no interest in this game mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. to I'd look for it on sale. Yeah. You know, I I, I if I if I was super into whiskey and stuff like mm -hmm. that, I would have it been no brainer, you know, to pick it up. A, now, anytime he's got a game, I instantly like it goes down on my priorities list mm -hmm. because I can. I know he wants to play. Yeah, it. you got to have like outside uh, priorities of like uh, you're gonna play it with your wife or something like that, you yeah. know, or you know you got you, you're wanting to play it outside of of uh, being tied to us getting together. But there's a lot of games like that. That's nice to have uh, somebody that's well, I can, got a decent I can think of a, stuff. Too. I've got a number of gamer friends in mm -hmm. my life that love whiskey and, mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and thinking about alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The so. ones that aren't in the, at, at the Betty Ford clinic are, are great for, <laughs> yeah. for, for playing games and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I, I think that this is, I can see why this is so appealing to so mm. many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, yeah, they did, they did great. But um, well, good. Well, I guess we did have a little bit more to say about it. But I think, <laughs> I think that's about all we have to say for now, guys. Uh, uh, thank you so much for for sticking around and uh, and listening to us talk about uh, whiskeys and clickhors and uh, and having a great time making them. Um, if you enjoy this kind of content, you know, a couple of those free clicks on the screen uh, really helps support out channels like mine and like Sean's. Uh, so we appreciate it so much when you do. But as always, uh, do what is right for you. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your evening. Take care. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Irish whiskey makes me frisky. <laughs> frisky whiskey. <laughs> Frisky's whiskey.